Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to install Team Foundation Server TFS 2013 Update 4. Uh, during installation, we'll be going through some uh, important stuff, such as a uh, uh, basic type of uh, installation, uh, one um, server installation, and advanced installation, and also the prerequisite that if uh, needs to be installed on um, uh, while installing Team Foundation Server 2013. So uh, here is my Team Foundation Server where I'm going to install Team Foundation uh, Server 2013 Update 4. Um, and I do have already the installation media so we're gonna go ahead and open that up here's my TFS uh, underscore server dot exe so we're gonna go ahead and run as administrator it's always good idea especially in Windows 2008 R2 and Windows 2012 to run as administrator to avoid uh, later on uh, some of the errors so we're gonna go ahead and run as administrator click yes so we're gonna go ahead and accept the license install now it's gonna go through some uh, configuration files it's gonna load up and uh, the installation of T uh, team foundation server will be completed uh, in this wizard and after that we'll get into the configuration and that's the most important part so uh, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, pause the video as soon as uh, our installation of installing the files uh, will be there then I'll be back alright uh, the files are there uh, the installation files are there now we're back to the configuration um, if you look at the first um, tab up here is the basic configuration if you're just learning about team foundation server and doesn't know uh, much about the integration that TFS server can can have uh, such as a team foundation server uh, and also uh, the uh, management server uh, then um, uh, you can go ahead and install the basic configuration basic configuration will not let you do the SharePoint integration reporting services integration and other type of integration that you can do with team foundation server so standalone server uh, the difference between advanced and standalone um, stand single uh, standard single server installation is that uh, everything will be installed such as SQL server SharePoint um, depending on what component you're going to install it will be installed on one computer and uh, keep in mind when when you select that single server um, a standard single server installation it will not give you uh, much option for configuration it'll go ahead and install everything in one flash so um, if you just wanted to go ahead and, and install everything on one computer this is a best way to do it a standard single uh, server uh, configuration and the other thing is that the advanced if you have uh, your SQL Server, that uh, especially in production environment, uh, usually in organizations, uh, they have a separate uh, SQL Server. Uh, you you provide a se separate SQL Server. You provide a separate separate uh, SharePoint for TFS. Uh, then you need to choose advanced. Um, um, installation type so uh, application tier only upgrade if you're upgrading from update 2 to uh, update 4 and then you're gonna go ahead and run this wizard and uh, also the config configuration team foundation server proxy and uh, build server and extension for uh, uh, SharePoint products these are the things that I'll go through uh, each and everything uh, after we install the advanced uh, configuration uh, however, I will put in separate video uh, the integration with the uh, SharePoint, the integration with uh, the configuration with the reporting services, SQL Server reporting services. Uh, the, it, but it'll be all in one suite. So uh, stay, t stay tuned in order to learn uh, all the configurations such as SharePoint uh, integration and reporting services integration with. Uh, Team Foundation Server 2013 Update 4. So we're going to go ahead and choose the advanced and start the wizard. Again up here the wizard will tell you what you're going to uh, go ahead and configure. Uh, again reporting services will not be uh, covered in this video. It will be covered in separate video. Analysis services will not be covered. Reporting services reader account uh, that would come in place when we um, do the reporting services configuration 
and also the SharePoint uh, configuration we're gonna skip that in this particular video but uh, in next video once we installed uh, the team foundation server and uh, we have uh, the uh, team foundation server configuration and we can choose that to add SharePoint products and reporting uh, SQL Server reporting services product in there. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, uh, just uh, the database part and uh, uh, account. So we're going to go ahead and uh, click on database part. Here is uh, the SQL Server. If um, obviously since we uh, chose the advanced mode, uh, the I'm um, uh, assuming that your SQL Server is on a separate server. So we have. Uh, a separate server SQL server so this is uh, my uh, basically SQL prod this is uh, my SQL server instance and it's a separate uh, I do not have a SQL server always on availability on that particular um, particular uh, SQL server so uh, in order to uh, check the connectivity whether you have connectivity with that particular SQL server there's a little test button up here if you click on that if you get the connectivity right it's gonna be a green check bar if not then it's gonna be a red X so let's test that we're we're good with that we can connect that now uh, the database uh, names are going to be TFS underscore configuration and if you um, do the reporting services it's going to be TFS warehouse and analysis however you have an option to label the databases sometimes what happened is that a DBA would create a database for you uh, and uh, the service account might not have a database create permission so let's say that uh, you send them send, send DBAs an email that create the um, create the databases for me and you wanted to just connect to that databases that that would be a good option also you can use a pre-existing empty databases uh, again if you click on that then it would be like TFS underscore configuration is already existed and all it needs is that uh, create the database objects in there but um, uh, also if you wanted to do that um, you have one SQL server where you are doing development test and production so if you're doing development you can do dev yeah. notice right here TFS underscore dev configuration that'll tell you that this is a development configuration if you do the prod it'll tell you the production if you wanted to do that but uh, my suggestion is that uh, keep a uh, development and test separate on an even development and test SQL server so by the way you have an option so we're gonna go ahead and click next here is a, a TFS our service account. Uh, this is the account that TFS services are going to run under. So we're going to go ahead and I do have a TFS service account. So we're going to go ahead and provide that. And I want to keep authentication method uh, NTLM you can change this authentication met method later let's say that your environment or your organization really wanted to do the Kerberos then you can uh, select that later on you can go in the configuration and also select uh, the negotiate Kerberos so we're gonna go ahead and keep NTLM right now so um, if you wanted to check the service account whether it's, it's right or not uh, you can check that here especially the password if you put down the wrong password it will not tell you right here but you can test it right here and uh, your configuration will fail later on so go ahead and click next this is the port this is important let's say that you have another app application that is using 8080 port uh, you have an option to change 80, uh, 80 port to uh, non-standard port this is the standard port for TFS but you can change it to non-standard port and uh, the IIS virtual dire directory is going to be TFS so you have an option to change it again these options for me when I, um, you know I consider these options these are for dev and test and uh, um, uh, production um, especially dev and test if you wanted to do it on one computer then uh, you know during the installation you have an option to choose a different port and different uh, virtual directory let's say that I wanted to call it TFS underscore dev just wanted to put it out there 
so we're gonna go ahead and keep it this way and click next uh, this again this folder is really important um, if you have if your uh, system administra uh, administrators given you the page file this is where the page file will go if there is a page drive um, and um, uh, you know you can click on this bar and 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 select the P or page uh, drive in because that's going to be very important uh, during the uh, queries on uh, uh, TFS uh, right here it says 50 gigs should be free for um, the resources um, on, on um, especially on production I will always suggest that you would go ahead and follow the best practices on production if you're going to do everything on one drive then make sure that 50 gig is free right now I don't have a page uh, file so if if I do have a, a page drive I will go ahead and configure that right here so we're gonna go ahead and click next since I do have a C drive and 50 gig free so I'm good with that we're gonna go ahead and click next now here's a configure reporting services for team foundation server do you want to configure reporting services during this configuration or later on I'm going to do it later on in a separate video so I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this bar as soon as I will go uncheck this bar this will the reporting tab will go away all the warnings and everything and same with I'm going to do with the SharePoint products we're gonna uh, go ahead and configure it in separate video but not in this video so we're gonna go ahead and click next and uh, uncheck this SharePoint uh, integration with TFS click next create a, a new team foundation um, um, project collection uh, usually the default collection is your uh, 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 default collection if you wanted to change it rather than uh, name it the default collection when you the collection will be created it will show that it's a default collection but if you wanted to name it such a you know if your requirement is you wanted to do it on your uh, organization name you can do that or whatever uh, your requirement is really basically but I'm gonna keep it default collection for this uh, demo purposes so we're gonna go ahead and click next and this is the summary what's this uh, uh, this is the summary of the configuration that uh, what's this gonna do um, make sure that uh, you go through this again if uh, you're doing on production so we're gonna go ahead if you click on verify it'll verify all the password and everything let's say that you haven't tested that before and you can verify and every all the configuration will be verified against uh, uh, this summary so you can click on that we're gonna go ahead and click next as you can see that uh, we uh, got an error the database that you specify cannot be created because it already existed so what we're gonna do is I have done another demo so we're gonna go ahead and uh, tech brother SQL we're gonna go ahead and delete the that da those databases that was already created so let's do that real quick and we will run <clears throat> we'll run the uh, validation again so we're gonna go ahead and delete that we're gonna go ahead and delete this database as well these are the two uh, TFS databases that were created so now of this let's rerun our readiness check there we go so we're back to everything is green and we're gonna go ahead and click on configure it's going to take uh, most of the time right here when it creates the project collection it takes uh, a right amount of time so um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause the video and as soon as uh, everything is completed I'll be back and if I run into any issue uh, I'll share with you alright as you can see that our configuration uh, is completed successfully so we're gonna go ahead and click next and it's gonna open up for us the administration page here is the URL uh, you can click now and it'll, it'll uh, open the uh, uh, web access part of uh, 
the team foundation server that we just created so you can go ahead and click that it's gonna open up that and we're gonna go ahead and close this as soon as we'll close this it's gonna open up the administration part all right so our basically our TFS um, um, 2013 update 4 is completed successfully we're gonna go through some of the stuff up here if you look at the team project collection we have one team project collection and that is default collection that's what we created you can create uh, more um, uh, collections uh, using this wizard and uh, this is our administration uh, console that we'll be using for our SharePoint integration for our reporting in, uh, integration to create the builds extension of uh, SharePoint products schedule backups logs and everything uh, that uh, an admin on team foundation server uh, and can do uh, you can use this console and do that so basically this is it for as far as uh, the configuration uh, as far as the installation and the configuration of basic team foundation server uh, concerns we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the SharePoint and the reporting piece in separate video so stay tuned for that as you can see right here just wanted to show you quickly that our um, web access part of Team Foundation Server 2013 is also ready. Video helps.